I want to thank you guys for joining us. Today, we're going to be taking a look at heat sink number four. So since we're looking at M.2 NVMe heat sinks, we need something that's going to do a little bit better than what we've had in the last three. Now, the last one was really good. Sabrin did a good job. We got down to 54 degrees, but I'm hoping we're going to get down to 52. And we had a question that was asked, what's the big deal about 52 degrees? Well, I'm going to say that till we get to the summation. But uh, let's see what we do now, testing with copper. And the unit we're going to be taking a look at, let's look at a link. So the title of this video will be AWX LUMV M.2 Heatsink Pure Copper NVMe M2 2280 SSD. Seven fins of cooling for computer. Now what's nice about this, it says there's two pieces. Everything else we've looked at, of all of the other three, they've all been one. But now, we're looking at two. So as we look at and talk about value when we're putting in heat sinks, and we're going to save the, the uh, details about the thermal conductivity when we get to the summation. But right there, we've got three components. We've got two heat sinks, two pads, and we've got four bands. Nice. So if you're working on like uh, this particular card, the uh, Super Micro, the dual M.2 NVMe adapter, the nice thing about it, since we have uh, two M.2 NVMe drives, we're going to have two heat sinks. So that's going to give us more bang for the buck. Not only because we get better cooling with copper, but because we need two, we have two. We don't have to buy two. And these are extrusions. And you'll notice these extrusions are designed, and uh, we can take a look at the company, but if you look down through there, there's some machining to that. I first thought that was an extrusion, but I don't think that's an extrusion. That's machined. That's interesting. I expected an extrusion where all I had to do is cut links. No, sir. That is bar stock. You can see the marks. They're taking bar stock, and they're machining that. Wow. So copper is about twice as effective as aluminum. We can look down through there and see how that's cut. That is fascinating. Nothing like a close-up. Now, because of the way that those fins are designed, and these guys specialize in aluminum heat sinks, and we're using copper, I don't know why they're so hard to find. But this should excel. And there are no cuts going across, only the length. So some of the discussions about the direction of heat, I'll save until we get to the end. Right now, we want to focus on two things. Actually, three things when you think about it. One, we have a heat sink, which is actually two heat sinks, but we have three components. We have the heat sink, the pad, and the bands. Now, in the photo, as you look at the bands, they look more like O rings, which is what I expected, but these look like uh, heat resistant bands. So I expect we'll probably have about as much fun putting these bands on as we did on the other drive. We'll see. So all I need are two bands, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six bands. So that would mean they would uh, have the expectation, I guess, of using three bands, or else I have two bands and a couple of spares. According to what we can see and gather from Amazon, you can see right there, they show using what look like a couple of O-rings. That's what I expected. And this type of thermal pad looks more like a silicone type pad, so these ought to come up a little bit easier. And this claims this should reduce the temperature by 10 to 30 degrees, specially designed for desktop computers. What I like about here is the details they give. 100% red copper, surface oxidation treatment, thermal conductivity of 397. Like I said, to reiterate, which is almost double of aluminum. Gives the size and discusses the effectiveness on different items. And it says at the bottom, item is only applicable to desktop computer, not a laptop. The next one we're going to do after this one is made for laptops. And we needed to do this about heat sinks, including the one about laptops, even though I wouldn't use it on a desktop, because in another video, we're going to do a laptop that needs an M.2 upgrade. So if we're going to upgrade the M.2 while we're inside, which happens to be an Asus, Republic of Gamers laptop, which we've done three videos on already, so it would behoove us to see if there's anything we can do to improve the cooling situation. That computer has bio support but it does not have an M.2 NVMe drive. It has a spinning drive in there, but to reiterate, it has BIOS support for M.2 NVMe. So we've got to get into it, see if the connector's there. If it is, we'll go down that road, uh, but that's all a separate video. But I mention it now so it's relevant to why we have three, and one of the three is going to be specifically for a laptop. 
I still want to find out how it performs with a desktop. We're going to be doing this. Our test platform is on the um, WD Black SN850. And we're going to be putting that on the dual M.2 NVMe adapter by Supermicro. And the second drive that's going to be in here that we could put a heat sink on, but we're not because we're only going to test the one, is a Samsung 980 Pro. We're going to run it on the top drive for heat. And for the test we're going to do, we'll bring up on the left-hand side hardware info, and then we'll do our uh, disk test analysis on the right, and we're going to highlight those temperatures, see how this plays out. My expectation that this will equal or should exceed, and my goal is 52 degrees. And by the way, welcome to Builder By. My name is Gil Boyd. Thanks for joining us. And i got to tell you, I'm, I'm excited. I'm stoked about this because I'm expecting great things. Okay, first thing we have to do, I want to do a dry assembly. I've got a thermal pad. I'm going to lay that up, get an idea of length, and just a rough idea. Yeah, that's a perfect length. So all I need to do is go ahead. I'm going to peel this. I'm going to put it on the heat sink. Length is good, a tad bit long. Width is just a little bit wider than necessary. But as we look at it from the top, you can kind of see a little bit of an overlap. So I want to get some idea of what I'm working with before I try to stick it down. So this is an installation and testing. Perfect. Let's peel, stick, test, install, check our results. So I think what I'll do since I've sized that up, I'm going to lay that pad down and I'm going to drop this on top knowing what I'm working with. Perfect. I like the way that sits. That looks good. Perfect. I like to keep it simple, make it work. Okay, each one of these thermal pads, which appear to be a silicone type pad, has a plastic cover. So I'm going to save that plastic cover so that I can uh, protect it. We're only going to try one heat sink. So now what we want to do, I'll set the heat sink aside. I've got the memory out and I've got the card over to one side. So I'm going to peel this on this heat sink. Yeah, with my gloved fingers. Got it. I could have used a micro screwdriver on that, but this is working. It pulls that pad up as I pull that off, but it goes right back down. And I've still got integrity with the heat sink and the pad. And then I can apply that right on top. And I want to be sure I clear the connector. That was one thing that bugged me about the last one, that we were so close to this connector. And we've got to leave adequate room so we make contact. And we're good on this end so we clear the screw. So this is just a tad bit shorter, which I like. That looks good. Now we've got to get the bands. The last time those bands were kind of PITA, but we did it. And the micro screwdriver, as well as the uh, bent needle nose pliers, also helped with my thumb and then pulled down around the memory. Oh, these are a lot looser. In fact, these ought to be a little bit tighter. And I'll do the same thing on the other end. Secure it with, with my thumb, pull it over with the other hand. As long as it does the job, I know that's made to be mounted this way, but we're going to get this way. So I hope it doesn't uh, slide down over time. Get the orientation correct for the card. In we go for the insertion point. Connector clears. As we can see right there. We've got plenty of room. I like that. And we're good on this end. Hear that little? That means we're in that groove on that nylon bushing. Just drop the pin in, we're set. And that looks pretty good. And we are clear because we're only on the top, so we have nothing on the bottom of that component. But as we've shown previously, we still cleared that component, even with a wraparound. But this is a single-sided drive, and the telemetry we're going to receive is from a single sensor. And that's through the smart technology. So next step. We need to get that installed and see how that's going to work. This is exciting. Great. Love it when a plan comes together. Somebody else said that. Back in the computer. Now the test system. This is the Gigabyte TRX40 Designator Motherboard. We have two 16 lane slots and two 8 lane slots. And we're going in that first 8 lane slot because it's easier because we have Thunderbolt 3 in that last 8 lane slot. Now, as far as resource allocation, that Thunderbolt 3 card is only using four lanes, so we have four lanes that we 
that we lose. There's no way to reallocate that. And of course, the BIOS has already had uh, bifurcation turned on four by four. Four lanes for each drive, two drives on a card, eight lanes. Let's install. One of the nice things about this copper is it will uh, show up well on camera, whereas the other heat sinks, because they were anodized black aluminum, it was a little bit trickier seeing them. I don't think I've ever had so many cards in and out of a computer as I have this one with all the stuff we've been testing. Kind of wild. But hey, you guys ask, we try to deliver down the rabbit hole. And for those of you that are watching, because uh, this is only number four, we got two more to look at, and then we're going to do a summation, which will probably have to be a separate video. But i got to tell you, as good as this one is, there's one more that may be even better. Build a little drama, get you to watch. And for those of you that have been asking questions about this, you know, it's funny, uh, we answer one question, and it seems like it creates another question. That's all right. We learn by doing. Okay. Card is secure. I like the way that this uh, installed quickly. I'm a little concerned about the bands. I expected them to be tighter, and I think they should be just a little bit tighter than what they are. I don't know over time, and I can understand why three bands put the three bands on there. I've only got two. This is temporary because we're just testing as we go through and which one. And, and I will reiterate, we're using one thermal pad, which is the way this is designed. Trying to keep everything apples and apples. I'm really glad that we chose to use the Supermicro card for this testing because of those nylon uh, attachment points. I know somebody on Amazon had complained about those, but man, I'm a fan of those because it's made it a lot easier doing all this back and forth stuff. And uh, it has some other features like, I like the LEDs that show which one of the uh, drives is being activated. That's kind of nice to know what's going on. Okay. The first thing we want to do is Windows flag E, this PC, and identify the two drives. The WD Black SN850 with a label on drive D where the heat sink is at, and in the second connection, Samsung 980 Pro. We'll bring up hardware info. We're only looking at sensory data, and this is telemetry from Smart. And we're going to focus on two thermistors which will be this one on top for the WD Black SN850. Right now we are at 34 degrees, and then the Samsung 980 is at 35. And we're looking at the current, minimum, maximum, and average. So we're going to bring up Crystal Disk Mark. We're going to go to Drive D, a one terabyte drive with a one gigabyte test file. We're going to do all. We should get up to 7,000 megabytes, and we're going to watch these numbers as they crawl. And our goal is to stay below 52. And I'm going to save that information for the summation. Okay, test is complete. Now, we remember, this is a PCI Express 4.0 drive, second generation, so capable of 7,000 megabytes. And we achieve our top heat number when we get to the second number on the right. So as we look at the heat, our current is 49 degrees. The minimum was 34 degrees when we booted up. But our maximum was 61 degrees. I'm, uh, I'm disappointed in that because our second heat sink we tested was at 62 degrees and the first one was at 70. However, the Sabrent, which was number three, was at 54 degrees. And the Sabrent was a combination of aluminum and copper and that's the one that has the heat pipes and it was also the biggest of them. I'm, uh, I'm really surprised. I expected these numbers to be better. I did not expect 61 degrees. I expected something closer to the 54 degrees. And that's, uh, that's copper, and copper is supposed to be twice as effective as aluminum. Sabrent's got a nice little cooler they've created. Now, based on those numbers of 61 degrees, I don't expect the next two heat sinks that are all copper to be as good as I had hoped they would be. So I'm really surprised. I'm really surprised how the Sabrent heat sink excels at what it does. So my perception, i got to tell you, that leaves me stunned. Uh, knowing what the uh, technology is, knowing the metal. There are two other technologies that, that does not have a lot of attention right now. One of those is diamond technology. You can look it up. Another one is uh, some nanotechnology. So there's actually three because the other one uses like the uh, Peltier effect. Now, some of this stuff with liquid cooling, we, we cannot do.
because of the space requirements we've got. And I'm not talking a closed loop system. I'm talking a liquid cooling immersion type system. Uh, that's something they're doing now in data centers. So our best option is either going to be industrial diamonds or probably nanotechnology. I mentioned the silver to get people to kind of think about something different out of the box. This is, uh, I expected better, but it is what it is, 61 degrees. So I want to thank you guys for watching. This is Builder Bond. My name is Gil Boyd. We're on to the next video. We're out.